Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Looks like I'll be getting um, all four of those videos out today like I wanted to. A bit late, but at the same time earlier than I normally do. It's not Ohio Gazimus, good morning, it's Konbanwa, good night. So, coming at you with Second Chronicles, chapter 1, starting at verse 7. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? What an amazing option what an amazing offer that the lord gave to solomon that night how many of us would like to have an offer like that how many of us have had an offer like that and solomon said to god you have shown great mercy to david my father and have made me king in his place now O lord god let your promise to david my father be established for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, Because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king, wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. And I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. Now the interesting, this is a bit of an interesting message in the fact that this is very much so directed at believers, at my fellow Christians. Now if you're not a Christian, feel free to continue watching if out of just sheer curiosity. Nothing wrong with that. If you're going to ask God for something, or you're going to barter with God for something, we can debate whether it's right or wrong in the comment section down below. But let's be honest, we've all done it at some point in our walk with the Lord. And what I want to say here is if you're going to do that, do it with a whole heart, do it with complete honesty, and give a good offer. It, 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 that's kind of a, I guess it's kind of a weird thing to say, but like I said, it's going to be a little, it's very much so directed at Christians, those who often pray, those who come to the Lord. When you go to the Lord, it's kind of like we know the things we should ask for and the things we shouldn't ask for, and we know like what God is pleased with and what he's not. And sometimes our, our ideas are mistaken and our hearts are misled. That's absolutely possible in this dark, sin-shrouded world that we live in. It's absolutely possible we can be deceived, we can be in the wrong, and we can be asking for something wrong, and we think it is absolutely right. Knowing that, generally speaking, we know this kind of prayer is a righteous prayer, this kind of prayer is not really a righteous prayer, it's more of a selfish prayer. And if you're going to ask God for something, if you're going to make a legitimate request to God, one, make any request you want, but if you're, if God gives you a deal, so to speak. If you are standing before the king and you know he's listening and you know it's time to shoot forth a prayer, as Christians, if you haven't had that moment, keep seeking it. It will come. There will come a point where you just, you know you're in God's presence and you know that you're speaking to the king and that he's hearing you. And at that point, it's like, I can, I'm talking to God. I can literally ask anything. I can request anything. And Solomon's case, he was like, what do you want? I'll give it to you. It was an open offer. And when those offers come, don't go for the selfish. Don't go for the obvious. Don't go for the things that will simply benefit you. Even if you get those things, if you ask for the righteous, if you ask for the good, if you ask for something after God's heart, there's a good chance, just knowing Daddy, that he'll give you all the extra things that your heart desires, if you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. That's in Matthew, Sermon on the Mount. Google is your friend. So no, it's kind of, I'm not trying to give a way to manipulate God because he can't be manipulated as he sees through everything we could ever do, say, or think. So you'll never be able to manipulate him. But if you're going to approach him, Approach God like you would any other person. You kind of have a feeling you know what his character is, you know what he likes, you know what he dislikes. You have an idea, however sh shadowy and clouded it is, mine is too, of how powerful, of how opulent, of how wealthy, of how magnificent he is, and the things that he can give you. So go to him knowing who he is. Say something you know he'll approve of. 
If your heart's wrong, he'll correct you in a heartbeat, and you'll probably just get a good rebuke and a good sermon out of it. And we also need to come to a point where we look forward to those and accept those and stop fighting, but listen. Because the sooner we get through all that crap, and the sooner we repent, the sooner we can start asking for the things after God's heart and then get all those wonderful little extras that we so strongly desire. And sometimes we will discover along the way as we're pursuing God in a, in a hot, just almost irrational, just loving pursuit of Him, we'll discover a lot of those little things that we want along the way. They've kind of tipped off. They've kind of dropped off somewhere, and we can't really find them anymore. And that's good, too. But hey, just for an example right now, of all the things that I could be doing right now, and it's not a full-time job. I'm not getting a ton of money from it or anything, but I am on YouTube playing video games and preaching the Word of God like my two biggest dreams in this entire life, and I'm doing it every day. Every day. Maybe one day it'll become something, maybe not. But I get to do what I love. I get to do it every day. And it's a blessing, and it's awesome. And I know from the bottom of my heart that God is, He didn't call me to do this, but He's okay with me doing it. Like His hands on me, His hands on this. You know, if He tells me to drop it, I'll of course obey Him, but I get to literally live my dream here. And after, after it's been almost two decades at this point, wow. Um, no, over two decades. I accepted him at 13 and I'm 36, so that's 23 years, over two decades of serving God. Progress has been made. So keep seeking, keep pursuing, keep getting there. And if he does make you an offer, choose wisely. Maybe even ask him what it is you should ask him. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If this didn't make a whole lot of sense to you, please don't worry about it. Um, this, this message wasn't for everybody. Some people will get it, some won't. And it's not a matter of being intelligent or stupid or mature or spiritually wise. It's just a matter of where you are in your personal walk with the Lord. If you're there yet, great. If you're not there yet, that's also great. Either way, keep pursuing Him, keep seeking Him. And if you think this is nonsense, not a problem whatsoever. If you've watched this far, despite that, thank you so much. If this meant something to you, also thank you very much for watching this. I love each and every one of you. Those who get it, those who don't, those who think it's dumb, those who think it's great. Love y'all, and God bless y'all.